Exposed on Japan's Pacific coastline lies Jokashima Island in Kanagawa. It's home to a massive fish production line that processes some of the world's highest quality tuna that's sent daily across the globe. The fattiest part is called Otoro, sold at a premium for over 100 US dollars per piece. Today's mission is simple to ensure 300 kilograms of tuna goes from freezer to fresh sushi on a Singapore menu within 36 hours. When it comes to premium tuna, any delays in delivery could cost the company thousands of dollars. In this age of convenience, consumers demand their goods to be delivered from anywhere in the world at hyper-fast speed. Each year, air cargo transports over a third of all global cargo value. That's over six trillion US dollars worth of stuff we've bought in our lives, flying the skies. kilometers from Japan's capital city, Tokyo, some of the world's most expensive fish are preparing for a flight to Singapore. Sho Kitamura is part of a team exporting around 500 kilograms of tuna to restaurants and wholesalers in Singapore every week. やっぱり、ま、昨今、ま、寿司をはじめとした日本食のブームを来てると思うんですけれども、昔だと、あの、物流があの、うまく整えられてなかったので、日本の魚輸出してもあの、全然使えなかったりとか。ま、近年様々な要因でコールドチェーンが確立されたことによって鮮度を保ったまま高品質な魚が輸出されたことも一つの大きな
to prevent fluctuations in temperature. こう出荷してるとたまにこう蓋とか外れて中身溶けてちゃってしたりすることあるんでちょっとこうやってしっかり梱包していただけるの本当ありがたいです。The challenge now is for the tuna to reach Singapore in the next 24 hours, guaranteeing optimum freshness. But first, the freezer truck drives 80 kilometers to Tokyo to pick up a batch of fresh fish before heading to the airport. まあ、ここで遅れちゃって、それをに着くのが遅れちゃうと、やっぱりもう飛行機に間に合わないってことが起きちゃうんで。チャンギエアポート、is world renowned for its award winning passenger terminals and facilities。but beyond the tarmac lies a hidden world。every year。Close to 2 million tons of cargo passes through Changi Air Freight Center. Changi is the 10th largest international air cargo hub globally. As you approach Changi Airport, you will see the terminals and you will see the control tower and jewel. But over on this side, behind the terminals, this is where the Changi air cargo operations take place. Changi Air Freight Center is spread across 47 hectares. That's over 50 football fields and houses multiple players. Changi Airport's role is we see ourselves as the conductor of the orchestra. We are the ones who make sure everything moves smoothly. Within massive warehouses and cargo terminals, ground handlers, freight forwarders, and logistics companies race against time to move tons of goods across the globe. Singapore Airlines sees more than 130 cargo carrying flights land in Changi every day. These special shipments also need to monitor, so departure is tonight. When his shift begins, Jun Wen takes charge of the airline's freight operations. Since I find that aviation is very interesting, all different parts work together so that aircraft can depart on time and move from point A to point B. His role is crucial, ensuring cargo going in and out of Singapore runs like clockwork. And when problems arise, it's Junwen to the rescue. A delay in loading can have dominant effects on our flight operations around the world. If there's a flight delay out of Singapore, we inform the next station ground staff so that they can expedite the turnaround and minimize the potential impact. Later, the cargo, after unloading, you can send to the next connecting flight. Okay, get it. Thanks. It's pretty exciting. It's like watching a World Cup where different people work together and the main goal is to depart the aircraft on time. Cargo doesn't just travel on special aircraft. Your holiday suitcases may share a hold with perishable food, flowers, or even live animals. But for sending larger scale cargo, planes like this Boeing 747 freighter are rigged for maximum capacity. In our passenger fleets, the main deck is full of seats. But for our freighter, there is no seats at all. It may look like an empty shell, but there's all these power drive units, all the locks, all the tracks for us to load our cargo. The 747 freighter is the only aircraft in Singapore Airlines fleet that can load and unload cargo through its nose. Its two decks can carry up to 116 tons of cargo of varying shapes and sizes. We can carry outside cargo, uh, engines or even a sports car. Next one, we're going to have a very special cargo on board is horses. It's not often that we get to see live horses travelling on board. And we are very excited about this. Back in Japan, two hours since leaving the factory in Miura, the frozen tuna truck is making a final stop before the flight to Singapore. 
This is the world-famous Toyosu Market. Here, more than 1,400 tons of seafood is bought and sold every day. The truck needs to add 62 kilograms of fresh fish to the Singapore shipment. これ私たちの出荷作業は非常に繊細な作業になっております。でもやっぱりどんだけ梱包だったり、その、しっかり対策したというふうに考えていても、どうしてもやっぱりま悪くなっている時は、もちろんありますし、すべてのポイントが重要になって
This is an automated vertical sorter. It directs packages to dedicated belts according to their final destination. But sometimes, the back-to-back -back flow of goods comes too quickly. As you can see, the belt has temporarily stopped. It's because the containers are filling up. So we have to move out the filled containers, replace them with the empty ones. Once they're ready to load, they will restart the belt and then the packages get flowing again. We are an express delivery company, so timing is very important. We have a fixed time for departure. We definitely don't want the plane to be late. Gateway Operations Manager Casey and his team are midway through the evening export rush at the Changi Air Freight Centre in Singapore. It's a quarter to eight, and the plane has to be fully loaded by 9.30 p.m. After a couple of stoppages in the conveyor belts, the flow of outgoing packages has resumed. How many containers we told you? Uh, three. Three, yeah. In the world's 10th busiest international air cargo hub, there's no room for delay. So we try to maximize the space of our containers, making sure that the packages are tucked as tightly as possible. 35% of world trade moves on air freight. It's not just about you getting a bag, right? It may be because of a business need, vaccines for life-saving, medicines, etc. Maybe to a lot of people, it's very pressuring you know, to have to deal with this large amount of shipments every day. I want that way. But I think for most of us, this is our daily life. It's uh, what we do. So the last of our containers is currently being towed to the ramp site. Overall, it's been a pretty smooth day. Uh, there has been a couple of belt stoppages here and there, but uh, we managed to pull through it. But the evening cargo rush is far from over. Uh, Andy, come here, Andy. OK, uh, break which container and put inside the bag. Andy, Ramp Supervisor Saj is in charge of making sure the containers are loaded correctly onto the aircraft and exactly on time. Today, our departure is 2145. So we have to complete our loading by 15 minutes prior to pushback. Well, we have to take into consideration the safety aspect and we also have to do it fast. So that's actually a challenge. For safety, whatever is loaded must tally exactly with a precise load yeah. plan, as coordinated with Mirza of the Gateway team, yeah. back at the hub. OK, uh, any issue today so far? So far, no issue. The load plan determines the position of each container throughout the aircraft to ensure the weight is evenly distributed. Without proper loading, the plane cannot take off safely, and it could tip backwards onto its tail. OK, right now, we're looking at the cross-section of the aircraft. The system will actually show uh, how heavy you are, how light you are, and where you are basically sitting in terms of balancing of the aircraft. So right now, what the team is doing is basically trying to confirm with our REM team whether loading is completed and in order. OK, so that's, that's my call. On the tarmac, it's pouring with rain. And that's not the only issue. Uh, bro. Yeah, start go ahead. Hey, bro, the LDL down, bro. Oh, so it's not work. Can you load or cannot load? No, uh, the 5P6, P7 not loaded. Uh. I tell what, I tell what, then you can remove the 3 lima, 2 Romeo, 4 lima, 4 Romeo, and then you swap the 5 lima to 6 lima. Then we load the 3 on top. Ah. OK. Yeah, I can, 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 can. Uh, so actually, uh, we have a bit of issue. Uh, one of the loading equipments, uh, lower deck loader, is broken down. So what we have did is we have shifted the container to the main deck. 
Thanks to Saj and Mirza's quick thinking, the loading continues on schedule. Okay, three center, boy. Ah. The challenge now is to remove the faulty loader so that the plane can push back for takeoff. Luckily, it's not a heavy downpour. It's not a lightning band or what, so we still managed to carry on with it. There ain't no time. We have to do it. So we managed to uh, settle the problem. So any moment the aircraft will be out. The job is very challenging because we deal with uh, life flight. <laughs> like what you saw just now, <laughs> anything can happen. The most exciting is to see the aircraft push back on time. <laughs> that is the best. <laughs> That's the best ever feeling. Singapore isn't just a hub for the transfer of cargo between east and west. It's also the final destination for unique goods, otherwise unavailable in the island's tropical climate. This is the Cheese Arc, a local specialist store run by Ai Ming. As the name suggests, it specializes in importing one thing. I've been called the Cheese Lady. The shop has been called the Cheese Church. We sell really ancient and old cheese. So rightfully, we are in the oldest HDB block built in Singapore, in Queenstown. So uh, this is the Beaufort. It's from Savoie in France. It's over two years old. Very nice flavor. Uh, this is always controversial. This is mimelet, and these crevices are made entirely by the cheese mites, eating away at it and giving it flavor. Over the past decade, Ai Ming has made it her mission to source cheese from small farms across Europe and bring them in to Singapore. The focus really is on small, tiny little farms that looks and feels like they've been trapped in time and bring them here so that people have a chance to taste what she's made that way taste like. For the first time since the COVID-19 pandemic began, Ai Ming is visiting a cheese farm in Tre Horninghua, Sweden. It's been three years, I think, since I've last been back here. So quite, quite excited. How are you? Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good. Long time. Hey. Soren and his wife, Anna Karen, run this farm and have been making cheese here for the past four decades. It's a very, very traditional setup where a husband and wife does everything in the farm. We now have 45 milking goats and with about 30 kids. Happy goats. Happy me. Happy you. Yeah. <laughs> the duo's specialty is a type of goat's milk cheese known as the Ashed Pyramid for its shape and unique edible ash coating. This is since yesterday. So I do it a little bit around the surface like that. And then I do it like that. OK. And then we can put them into the jar there. OK. Perhaps not doing it in the same way that I. It's <laughs> a lot of noise. <laughs> Ai Ming helps prepare her shop's order for its long journey to Singapore. A lot of people seem to think that whenever I visit a farm, I carry the cheese bag with me in my luggage, which is just not possible. So it's quite nice that I am actually packing my own cheese uh, and sending it from Sweden. Anna Karen has developed several ways to preserve these ashed pyramids while in transit. First, she seals the cheese in individual jars, where they can breathe or create their own controlled atmosphere. Packs of cooling gel and thermal bags are then used, maintaining the overall temperature. This cheese has, is matured at 12 degrees. So now, during the transport, we are trying to keep it below 8 degrees Celsius in order to get it in the same 
condition to Singapore. The shipment is finally ready for its over 10,000 kilometer journey to Singapore. Singapore is, is the furthest that their cheese has ever traveled to. Even after so many times of them doing it, they are still quite worried. Super good. So it's quite heartwarming. They really care right up to the end. Back in Singapore, another special shipment is about to be sent via air cargo. I've lost count of how many animals we've flown. It's probably by the thousands and thousands. My name is Lenz and I manage Shiloh Animal Express. We specialize in pet and horse relocation. It's not an everyday job. A lot of people say, wow, you get to play with animals every day. But the fact is the job uh, entails a lot of work. You deal with the owners, you do airlines. It is pretty much like a logistic company. Lance has over 20 years of experience and knows why flying animals is often far more challenging than flying humans. During COVID, we have flown many animals by private jet because flight was all closed and there's no way the owner could get the animals out. For some owners, they would go to extremes for their most precious pets. We chartered one private jet just for one dog from Singapore to Edinburgh. Just one dog in the whole private jet. He drinks Evian on board. That is something that uh, we've not done before and it's really eye-opener. This morning, Lance is preparing a much larger scale shipment for a long-haul flight. We'll be flying a shipment of three horses out to Europe. Uh, we'll fly into Amsterdam. This is Rex. And behind me is Kaiser. The horses are being relocated to Europe, either for retirement or to join their owners who are moving back from Singapore. But before making the trip, they first undergo a lengthy pre-flight process. We are sending the three horses into isolation. It's the start of the isolation today. Horses traveling to Europe are required to be isolated for 30 days to ensure they are free of disease. A veterinarian also needs to certify them fit for travel. OK, let's go grab a look. So most people don't know, just like human, horses also have their passport and they have to travel with their passport. So we're looking at any markings on the horse. For example, the horse has a white marking on his head and he has a brand on the left hind limb. So the microchip number tallies with the number here. So it's the correct horse that we're talking about. Following identification is a visual examination to spot any warning signs of illness. I'm looking at the eyes. Check his ears. Good horse. I know, I know. During the inspection, they also will take the horse out for a trot to make sure that they're walking properly and smoothly. OK, maybe walking a little bit faster. OK, looks OK. Then, thank you. Unfortunately, Lance has detected an issue with one of the horses named Esclavo. If I'm not wrong, I think it's this leg. OK. Pull it down. Let's do a bit of a trot up down. Slower trot. <laughs> it's actually visibly lame. If the horse is showing signs of lameness, it's an indicator that maybe he can't stand for very long, especially if it's a travel to overseas to a faraway country where they have to stand in a stall for the duration of the flight. So this could be a factor of whether we allow it to be exported overseas. It's less than a month before Esclavo's flight to Amsterdam. Lance and Dr Chia will have to monitor his condition before giving the all clear. We hope it gets better and we'll just have to see whether the limb goes away or not with some treatment. Hopefully, we can progress uh, for the next 30 days to be smooth sailing and a smooth flight. It's 
1 a.m. in Singapore. While most of the country sleeps, ground operations are in full swing for late night flights landing at Changi Airport. Our plane is coming in, as you can see, and there's a shipment of seafood that is coming in from Narita. The baggage guys were here to immediately uh, tow out the baggage. The cargo guys are here to immediately tow out the cargo. Once unloaded, the tuna sent from Mura 18 hours before has to be moved as quickly as possible to one of the air freight center's cold chain facilities. A giant 8,000 square meter refrigerated storeroom called Sats Coolport. Sometimes when I go grocery shopping, I will tell my children that some of these products actually come from Changi and actually comes from Coolport. And they are amazed at how we handle the perishables. Perishable goods comprise over 10% of all global air freight. The cool port is one of the facilities operated by ground handler SATS. With 18 cold rooms and round-the-clock operations, it handles a quarter of a million tons of perishable goods a year. In a sense, we are the backbone of Changi Airport when it comes to ensuring that the operations move on smoothly. You can mount flights, but at the end of the day, you need people behind it to be able to execute the transfer of shipments. Near a bit, near, near, near a bit. Front, 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 front some more. OK, good. All right. Cargo coordinator Scheifel has been working in the cold for the past 12 years. It's a kind of uh, winter wonderland inside. This morning, his team will be processing cargo for around 30 flights, including the seafood shipment that's come in from Tokyo. The small one put on top. No, the small one put on top, on top. OK, now we are breaking down the shipment from Japan to see if there are any damages, and they will be uh, bringing it to the correct temperature zone for storage. All the way. Each shipment is stored in its own designated zone, with electronic monitoring in place to ensure there are no shifts in temperature. OK, we were in the freezer room just now with the temperature of uh, minus 20 degrees Celsius. I'm more used to it now, but if you can see my ears, my ears are now turning red, and they're going to fall off anytime soon. <laughs> It's been about six hours since the flight from Tokyo landed. A delivery truck arrives to take the shipment to its final destination, a premium dining space in the heart of Singapore. マグロの鮮度を保つためにはコールドチェーンのロジスティックスが非常に重要です。やっぱりもう普段は日本に住んでいるので日本の方々しかあの目にしできないんですけれども。まあ、そういったあの輸出という形でシンガポールとつながりを持てて、彼らが非常に満足をしているということを聞くだけで非常にあの報われるような気持ちになります。While well, one product's journey ends, another begins. Over at local nursery, Ban Mi Chen. We are looking through our Christmas tree pre-orders because we list the trees up for booking about two, two months plus in advance. This Christmas season, the nursery will be importing their trees from a farm in Denmark, which specializes in Nordman firs, trees which are less likely to shed needles in Singapore's tropical heat. Once the trees are harvested, they will need to get to Singapore fast. We decide to air freight the trees in because from the time that they are chopped off the ground, it's really like a race against time to get the trees to Singapore you know, as soon as possible. As head of the nursery's e-commerce team, Young's had to learn the ins and outs of Plant Parenthood something he only became familiar with a few years ago. 
I didn't come in as a plant person. So I was doing like IT stuff in the past. But once you get into here, it's quite easy to get into the hobby. Like you start with like one plant, you watch it grow, and it just goes off from there. <laughs> Since the COVID pandemic began, Yang has seen how staying at home has created an interest for plant rearing, including species from overseas. So these anthuriums, we get them in from Holland about once a month, uh, twice a month maybe if the sales is really fast that month. Quite honestly, it's very hard to kill them, so that's why we sell a lot of these. Then over from Malaysia, we also get a lot of these uh, Venus flytraps. So carnivorous plants are definitely always very popular with like kids. They look very strange and they will just want to stick their fingers in for fun. With less than two months to go before Christmas, Yang eagerly awaits the order of Christmas trees. Back at Changi Air Freight Center, teams from ground handler Donata are processing cargo for upcoming evening flights. Yes, come. We handle on average about 30,000 shipments a month. We've got about 260 people working all different times. Singapore does have a bit of an aging population. So encouraging people to come and work in an outdoor environment where things are busy, where we're working 24 hours through the night on shifts, can be very challenging. Okay, Felix, yeah. before you accept this cargo, what must you do? Okay, so basically, we have to check the label. Okay. Operations supervisor Ghazali serves as a mentor figure to the younger staff. Okay, Felix, now we start a scan. Okay. When the new staff came in, I have a sense for them whether they can do it or not. My role is to look out for my staff, advise them, make sure everything is running smooth. Today, he is running through the export process with newcomer Felix. He's on a work-study diploma program that allows students like himself to get hands-on experience on the Donata floor. The length here shown is 210, uh, with the width at 150 and the height at 190, totaling up to 997.5. Okay, correct. It's six hours before takeoff, and Ghazali wants to test if Felix remembers his training. Tonight's shipment to Paris comprises a variety of electronic goods, which will need careful handling. Where is the best position for us to load this crate? I think we can load this crate on top of that box. Huh? Is it suitable? We need to place the heavy crate in the center. After, we can top up with a small carton and lighter cargoes. OK. So, berat bawah dengan atas? Huh? Yes, berat bawah dengan atas. OK. Uh, the first time when I came here, I feel really overwhelmed. OK, man, straight. People think cargo is only putting box on top of another box. But you need to check where does the box come from and which airline is this going to, how many quantities and then the quality of the cargo also. So it's not only doing one thing. You have to check a lot of things so that when the pallet goes into the airplane, it's all going smoothly. Yeah. I feel like I still have a lot more to practice, but I'm slowly getting the hang of it. The cargo is almost ready to be sent to the aircraft. Under Ghazali's watchful eye, Felix will complete the final step, maneuvering the pallet onto the weighing station. OK, Felix, yeah. you need to check your alignment. OK? Be careful. OK. okay slowly, be careful. Be careful. OK, okay. done. Okay. When I first started here, I get puzzled. You know, it's easy for me because I've been here in 32 years. The quality you need to work here is patient and teamwork. Cargo moves so many hands, and we need teamwork for that. OK, good. Okay. Thanks to their combined efforts, the cargo will make it securely to the aircraft with plenty of time to spare. Yeah, I have a lot more to learn, but the team that I have is very supporting. Every time I have uh, veterans like Ghazali to help me out, it's always the best thing about working. Uh. It's 
It's been a couple of weeks since Eiming's trip to Sweden. After a more than 20-hour journey over a connecting flight, the ashed pyramids from Treyhorninghoe are now en route to the cheese arc. Whenever I get cheese, it's a mixture of anxiety and excitement. I want to try new cheese, I want to taste new cheese, but there's always the worry that something might have happened to them along the way. It's about uh, six cartons, correct? Four. Four? Yeah. I'll just bring it up. Your last carton. OK. Thank you, thank you, Sebastian. But even after it's reached the shop, the race isn't over. Ai Ming needs to unpack and store the cheese fast before Singapore's tropical heat and humidity takes its toll. The cheese is like a lot of different foods. So in the same way how with fruit, when it gets warmer, it ripens. The same with cheese. And it's, it's just not a process that you can reverse. So very promising. The seal's not broken. You know, the work that went in is not just in the making of the cheese. So the last thing that you want to happen is for it to be damaged en route. The jars should be hermetically sealed. This look perfect. I, I honestly, honestly haven't had a better batch come through than this. It's always a little bit like you're, you're opening up something and that, you know, there's still some Swedish air inside. So, I gotta do this a bit fast. Um, they need to go into the rooms. After an over 10,000 kilometer journey, this special product is finally ready for customers. Hello. Hello! Long time. Yeah, it's been a while. So I was just up in Sweden two weeks ago. And this just arrived today. Yeah. I think it's very good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice and tangy. Yeah, and yeah. to make one of this, yeah. it's one litre of milk. It's one litre. It's quite nice when you think about how people can get a chance to taste something from a part of the world that they will never ever think to visit. This is a tradition that we don't get to experience of our own. But you can now eat the cheese, which is a culture that's still going on, that's still carrying on. So that alone makes it quite special. It's been two weeks since Yang and his team at Ban Ni Chen placed their order for Christmas trees from Denmark. With the Christmas season fast approaching, the clock is ticking. Our shipment was held up for a couple of days at Doha Airport, but it's uh, now en route to Singapore. The flight carrying the trees has touched down at Changi Airport. The shipment is now held at Sats Coolport, the perishable handling center. I'm checking for the right cargo to deliver to the agent. Okay, I'm ready for delivery now. Refrigerated trucks will take these trees on the final leg of their trip. Having this cold chain process all the way from Denmark to Bani Ching is especially important because the trees are grown in a very cold climate. So if they are exposed to heat, then they will start to dry out very quickly. The most nerve-wracking part of the process would be, uh, as you see, being uh, unloaded off the truck. Are they going to be still in great condition or not? Many of these things are like, you know, just running through your head. We unload there, then we sort the sides. Yang takes a closer look at the trees to assess for any damage. One part of the tree is most vulnerable and crucial for Christmas. The top part of the tree, the star pole portion, is uh, particularly fragile. People tend to put the big star decoration on it. So if the star pole is damaged like this, then we really can't sell it to anyone. It's the quickest way to tell if the poles are still attached. You just like, hit them a bit. So if they are like not attached, it will not bounce back. Lah. 
Thankfully, most of the trees have withstood the long journey and are now ready for sale. It's a little bit of a feeling of relief. Hopefully it looks nice when we also um, unwrap it, so that's a moment of truth. Every tree is unique. It's just something that is, you know, alive, right? One week ago, you know, the trees are still growing on Danish soil. And then, you know, one week later, it's in our customer's home. That's pretty remarkable. Next time on Premium Rush, Inside Air Cargo Singapore. Yeah, I will take one, you take one, you supervise that. Okay. Come on. Lance's horses embark on their flight to Europe. Come on, big man. But with some resistance. Come on, you're going. A cherry consignment battles to make it for Chinese New Year. Every single cherry is here. It's be hand sold, hand packed, and people check it before we ship this to Singapore. And some high-value live arowana makes its way to Singapore. We need all this microchip with the identity, then we will put some sanity in the water so that it will stay calm. 